Vegan plant-based diets for Crohn's disease. Do they actually work? And what's the best way to maximize your results? In this video, we'll break down everything you need to know about vegan and plant-based diets for Crohn's disease and how they compare to other diet options. We'll also cover some common mistakes to avoid and foods to focus on and what to eliminate and how to monitor your progress effectively. So stick around. Hi, I'm Dr. Chan Dasri, a surgeon dedicated to reducing inflammation caused by gut microbiome imbalances. I myself struggled with digestive dysfunction and autoimmune inflammation in my early 20s and successfully put together a methodology that worked not only in me, but also my patients. My method is called the Mind-Gut Immunity Approach and has resulted in thousands of successes over the years. If you or someone you know struggles with Crohn's disease and wants to rid themselves of inflammation for good, invite them to our website, mgiclinic.com and schedule a discovery call with me. I'll walk them through some practical steps for Crohn's disease recovery and how to achieve long-term results in just six weeks. On the website, we'll also have multitudes of free resources on how you can eliminate Crohn's disease naturally to help get you started. So check the link in the description below and get started. Also, before I forget, please like and follow to receive more content such as this. All right, let's jump in. Here's a 2024 study that explores the impact of plant-based diets on Crohn's disease, showing that it improves gut microbiome diversity and reduces intestinal inflammation. Here's a 2019 study discussing clinical remission in Crohn's disease based on a whole food plant-based diet. Most gastroenterologists will tell you that diet doesn't matter for Crohn's disease. So how do we know what truly works? As I mentioned in another video called Ideal Diet for Crohn's Disease, I'm a huge advocate for customized phytonutrient-based diet plans tailored to each individual person. I use four criteria to determine whether a diet will work for Crohn's disease or not. Now, this doesn't mean that diets have to be vegan or entirely plant-based. So to recap, the four criteria are phytonutrients, macronutrient requirements, microbiome specificity, and food sensitivity. If you want a deep dive into what each of these mean, check out the other video, Ideal Diet for Crohn's Disease, but I'll give you a quick overview here so you don't have to go back to that video. So now let's talk about plant-based diets and how they compare to other diets, like the Fido diet, which I recommend for Crohn's disease. You may remember from some of my other videos this concept of complex proteins. There are certain complex proteins that elicit an immune response causing Crohn's disease to worsen. We eat protein in our diets. It can come from a variety of sources, both plant and animal. A protein is basically a bunch of amino acids connected together. When the protein enters our digestive system, enzymes in our intestine break up these into individual components called amino acids, which then get absorbed. These intestinal enzymes are called proteases. And the reason this is relevant is sometimes the proteases don't get the job done and we're left with large particles of protein that linger in our intestines and bloodstream for long periods of time. Why does this happen? Well, certain types of protein are hard to break down. Also, there may not be enough protease to break down the proteins. As you already know, the gut is just one big giant immune organ. So these incompletely digested proteins register as a foreign threat and generate an immune response. Basically, the body thinks it's under attack by these large undigested proteins. So then it secretes a bunch of immune chemicals which cause inflammation, and that can be a problem. Next, you also have the arachidonic acid pathway, which is directly related to the consumption of animal-based cholesterol. All animal cells have a membrane wall that contains fats and cholesterol, which convert into arachidonic acid and cytokines in our bodies and generate inflammation. Do all animal-derived products contain arachidonic acid? No, just meat and fat-containing dairy products. You can also have a problem with saturated fat causing inflammation. Here's an article that looks at the role of saturated fats in producing inflammatory cytokines like TNF-alpha and interleukin-6. Taken as a whole, this is why vegan diets sometimes work for Crohn's disease. They eliminate these problematic foods, reducing the sources of inflammation. However, as I'll discuss further in this video, vegan and plant-based diets also have significant downsides which need to be carefully planned for to achieve success. The vegan diet for Crohn's disease revolves entirely around plant-based foods and tends to be higher in fiber and carbohydrates compared to fats and proteins. There are also variations of vegan diets like lacto or ovo-vegetarian approaches, 
but for our purposes, we'll focus on plant-based diets as a whole. This diet allows for some substituted items like vegan meats and cheeses, as well as alternatives to butter. Many of these substitutes are cashew-based, soy-based, or coconut oil-based, created to mimic non-vegan foods. Examples can include Beyond Meat, Impossible Meat, Diet Cheese, or plant-based milk options like soy, oat, or coconut milk. The idea here is to avoid the inflammatory properties of meat and dairy products. But here's the catch. Remember the four criteria I mentioned earlier? Let's evaluate how this diet measures up over time. The macronutrient balance of carbs, fats, and proteins play a critical role in determining whether a plant-based diet will work for Crohn's disease. I'll break that down in just a moment. Let's dive into the first criteria, phytonutrients. Phytonutrients are micronutrients found in plant-based superfoods. They're packed with antioxidants and anti-inflammatory compounds that benefit people with Crohn's disease by reducing inflammation in the gut. Here's a study of the gastroprotective effects of polyphenols and its impact on Crohn's disease. And here's one from 2018 discussing prebiotic fiber and resistant plant starch as it relates to microbiome changes in Crohn's disease. Phytonutrients fall into several key categories such as polyphenols, terpenes, thiocyanates, fiber, resistant starches, omega fats, and alkaloids. These micronutrients play a critical role in reducing inflammation throughout the body, beginning in the gut. When following a vegan or plant-based diet for Crohn's disease, it's certainly possible to consume large amounts of phytonutrients, but only if you're intentional about your food choices. Let's say, for example, that because you're vegan, you're eating a lot of processed flour, sugar, or fake meats and cheeses. If these processed foods lack beneficial phytonutrients and instead include chemicals that exacerbate gut microbiome-related inflammation, you're essentially working against yourself, not an ideal strategy. However, if you follow a more balanced plant-based diet that incorporates resistant starches, fiber, omega oils, and plenty of herbs and whole foods, then you're more likely to consume enough phytonutrients to help Crohn's disease. Now, let's talk about macronutrient requirements. The vegan and plant-based diets for Crohn's disease often struggle to meet macronutrient needs effectively. Macronutrients include carbs, fats, and proteins. By entering your height and weight and activity into the calculator on my website, you can estimate your specific macronutrient requirements. In general, a diet that gets half of its calories from fat is normally a good thing. Although I don't particularly like saturated fats and meats and certain plant-based foods, because as I said before, saturated fats are associated with inflammatory processes. I also don't like the animal-based cholesterol in meat, which can lead to an increase in arachidonic acid levels in the body. And I describe both of these pathways of Crohn's disease inflammation in my other videos on this channel. So if you need a refresher, feel free to look at those videos. When I design diets for my clients, they're generally lower in carbs for obvious reasons. Most of the fats come from plant omega sources, so these problems are totally avoided. I also ensure that there's at least 100 grams of protein in the diet, which can be challenging if you're relying solely on plant-based foods. You'll likely need to incorporate protein shakes made with plant-based protein sources. Additionally, it's crucial to ensure that some of these proteins don't cause sensitivities in the gut. Another issue I'll mention is that the vegan diets for Crohn's disease often fail to track carbs, fats, and proteins accurately. They also do a poor job at monitoring fiber intake, which can be problematic when optimizing the gut microbiome. Next, let's look at microbiome specificity. Let's go back to this equation. You have bad bacteria and fungi that feed on carbs, and that leads to inflammation. Vegan diets are higher in carb anyways, and some of these carbs are not helpful. So do vegan diets mean that you have healthier bacteria? The answer is a clear no. And I know this might sound controversial because there's plenty of people on YouTube who argue that gut microbiome's diversity is actually a good thing in people following a vegan diet. Even on Reddit, people seem to be raving about this, but let me give you a practical perspective. I've reviewed hundreds, if not thousands of stool studies over my career, and most of the time, people following vegan diets for Crohn's disease do not appropriately select for good bacteria in their intestines through their diets. The very nature of Crohn's disease involves inflammation caused by dysfunctional gut microbiome. At the start of our program, we use patented probiotics from Japan to recalibrate the gut microbiome and flush out harmful bacteria. But how do you carefully promote the good bacteria? It's not by avoiding carbs, it's by selecting the right ratios and quantities of phytonutrients. And this is where the mind-gut immunity method truly excels. We design the diets to encourage the growth of specific strains of beneficial bacteria, which form a protective biofilm and push out harmful bacteria and fungi. Over the course of several weeks, the body produces fewer pro-inflammatory markers like TNF-alpha and interleukin-6 thanks to these beneficial bacteria taking over. 
The biggest issue with the vegan diet for Crohn's disease is that it doesn't address the root problem. You tend to feed bad bacteria non-selectively because there are no real requirements regarding resistant starches or fiber. In fact, vegan and plant-based diets allow for a lot of plant-based sugars, carbs, and chemicals, all of which trigger flares seen in Crohn's disease. And I've seen this pattern where people may get better partially for a short period of time, but then they encounter significant issues and fail with vegan diets for Crohn's disease because the diet itself doesn't fix the gut microbiome dysfunction. Now, you can certainly make a plant-based diet work for Crohn's disease, but you have to follow certain principles. And that's where the Phyto diet comes in. It actually tackles the root microbiome problems associated with Crohn's disease. This means that long-term, you can enjoy more dietary flexibility, even incorporating cheat meals without consequences. I typically teach my clients how to cheat during the second or third month of the program because by that time, they've mostly resolved the gut issues in a lasting way. And I'm not a fan of temporary fixes. While the vegan diet can help during flare-ups, it's not sustainable long-term strategy compared to the customized Fido diets that we create for our clients. Over the years, I've spoken to many people during discovery calls who've tried and ultimately struggled with plant-based diets for Crohn's disease. Most of them report experiencing temporary relief only for their symptoms to return when they reintroduce normal foods. It's a pattern that I hear about very often. My hope is that this honest review of the vegan diet for Crohn's disease helps give you the clarity to decide if it's right for you. While it can produce short-term benefits, the real solution lies in addressing the gut microbiome for lasting relief from medication and symptoms. Okay, let's dive into the final criteria, food sensitivities. Food sensitivities are a critical topic when it comes to Crohn's disease. In my talks, I cover four main types of food sensitivity tests, the skin prick test, the IgE blood test, the IgG4 blood test, and the newer mediator release blood test. If you need a refresher on these tests, be sure to check out my video that dives into food sensitivity testing for Crohn's disease. Now, specifically regarding the vegan diet, there are tons of foods that are vegan and plant-based that can cause sensitivities. The most relevant ones include processed foods, sugar, sugar alcohols, dyes, chemicals, and even whole food proteins like beans, lentils, and peas. I've seen all of these test positive for sensitivities over the years. This means that the likelihood of being sensitive to one or more or several types of vegetables or vegan foods is quite high. That's why adopting a vegan or plant-based strategy for Crohn's disease can be risky. Your food options may be limited and you may develop sensitivities. All right, that's my talk. In the comments below, share with me your experience with vegan diets. What's worked for you and what didn't? I'd love to hear about your journey. As you know, I've had great success using the mind-gut immunity method in my clients, and I strongly advocate for customized phyto diets and focused gut microbiome recalibration to achieve lasting results. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content such as this. As always, this is Dr. Chanu Dastri with the Mind Gut Immunity Clinic, and I'll see you next time.